am Desena from Pasay City East High School and I will be your teacher for today's lesson. At the end of this video, you are expected to differentiate organic from inorganic compounds from its chemical formula, uses, and properties. Are you ready to learn? Let's begin! Before we go to the lesson proper, let's have a short review of the carbon atom. Do you know this chemical symbol? Yes, you are correct. This is an element carbon with atomic number 6 and atomic weight of 12.011. Carbon is a unique element. Carbon is positioned midway in the second horizontal row of the periodic table. It is neither an electropositive nor an electronegative element. Therefore, it is more likely to share electrons than to gain or lose them. Moreover, of all the elements in the second row, carbon has the maximum number of four valence electrons. And these valence electrons can form strong covalent bonds with other carbon atoms and at the same time strongly holds atoms of other nonmetals. Because of these properties, it forms many carbon compounds. With a growing variety of compounds, especially carbon compounds, they group the chemical compounds into two. Chemical compounds are divided into two groups, organic compounds and inorganic compounds. Look at these pictures which are considered organic and inorganic compounds. I want you to get your notebook and write your answers in 15 seconds. Your time starts now. Time is up. Let's check your answer. Chickens, eggs, soap, canola oil, grass, tomatoes, mushroom, and isopropyl alcohol are grouped as organic compounds. While bleach, rusted iron, sand, and water are inorganic compounds. Did you get them all correct? Good job! If not, don't worry because I'm going to guide you in this lesson. How can we consider whether a chemical compound is an organic or inorganic compound. Do you have an idea? Today, we are going to explore several differences between these two by discussing the following properties. Number one, organic compounds are a group of carbon-containing compounds. These compounds are naturally produced by living organisms like plants and animals but can also produce artificially. On the other hand, Inorganic compounds are compounds that do not contain carbon atoms. These compounds are obtained from the natural processes which are not related to any of the life forms on Earth or any result of human experiments which are conducted in laboratories. Organic compounds are characterized by the presence of carbon atoms, which are chemically bonded with hydrogen or the CH bond and other elements such as oxygen, sulfur, and nitrogen. Although not all compounds that contain carbon are organic compounds, noticeable exceptions are oxides of carbon like carbon monoxide, CO, and carbon dioxide, CO2, carbonates like calcium carbonate, CaCO3, carbides like calcium carbide, CaC2, and cyanides, example sodium cyanide, and ACN. All of these compounds are considered inorganic compounds. Let us compare two samples to see the difference between organic and inorganic compound. Sample A, which is sugar, the chemical formula is C12H22O11, contains several carbon atoms, so it is organic compound. While sample B, salt, the chemical formula and ACL doesn't have a single trace of carbon present. This sample is inorganic compound. Number two, organic compounds form a covalent bond. They are large and complex. 
when inorganic compounds form ionic bonds between the atoms of the molecule. They are usually small and simple. The great variety of organic compounds in nature comes from carbon's ability to create stable bonds with other elements. Carbon form long chains molecules like decane, branching macromolecules like natural rubber, and ring structures like benzene. Among the numerous types of organic compounds are found in all living things, like carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Also, organic compounds are classified by functional groups. On the other hand, inorganic compounds can be classified into basic categories of acid, base, and salt. Most inorganic compounds form ionic bonds between atoms of molecules. They are usually small and simple because it consists of two or more different elements that are combined, nearly always in definite proportions. Examples are hydrochloric acid, HCl, calcium hydroxide, CaOH2, and sodium chloride, NaCl. Number three. Organic compounds have properties that tend to be highly flammable and more volatile, while inorganic compounds are non-flammable and non-volatile. Organic compounds have properties that tend to be flammable because their elements are mostly carbon in which will burn in the presence of oxygen. Organic compounds are also volatile since they exist as molecules with covalent bonds between the atoms. They tend to have weak intermolecular forces, making them evaporate more easily. Benzene, methanol, octane, ethanol, acetone, and formaldehyde are examples of organic compounds with high vapor pressure. Most inorganic compounds contain ionic bonds, where atoms are tightly held together. Inorganic salts like calcium carbonate, sodium chloride, sodium bicarbonate, calcium chloride, potassium bromide, and sodium fluoride does not react with oxygen. Hence, they are non-flammable and non-volatile. Number four, organic compounds exist in the form of solids, liquids, and gases with low melting and boiling points while inorganic compounds exist as solids with high melting and boiling points. It is because of the difference in their chemical bonds. Sugar, C12H22O11, ethanol, C2H5OH, and formaldehyde, CH2O, are solid, liquid, and gas respectively, that have low melting and boiling point. Organic compounds are made of comparatively weak covalent bonds, making the interaction among organic compounds low and not strong. That's why it is easy to break. On the other hand, inorganic compounds are mostly made of strong ionic bonds, making the interaction strong and difficult to break, which gives them a very high melting and boiling points. Examples are aluminum hydroxide, ALOH3, calcium carbonate, CaCO3, sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3, and sodium chloride, NaCl. Number 5. The speed of chemical reaction among organic compounds is due to their covalent bonding. These reactions are usually slow when compared to the reactions in inorganic compounds which involve ionic bonding, which have a high rate of reaction. Number six, in most of the aqueous solutions, organic compounds are poor conductors of heat and electricity, while inorganic compounds are known to be good conductors of heat and electricity. Remember, electrical conductivity is only possible when a compound contains charged particles. Look at this picture. Sugar solution does not conduct an electric current because sugar dissolves in water to produce sugar molecules. These sugar molecules are usually neutral or not charged. 
and so are unable to move to the opposite ends of the electrons like the ions. Since most organic compounds are molecules and form a covalent bond, they don't have ions. Therefore, organic compounds are non-electrolyte or they cannot conduct electricity in a solution. However, in this example, a salt solution such as sodium chloride conducts an electric current because it has ions in it that have the freedom to move about in the solution. These ions are produced when sodium chloride dissolves in water to produce positive sodium ions and negative chloride ions. When you insert the electrodes of a conductivity tester in the salt solution, the positive sodium ions usually move to the negative electrode, while the negative chloride ions move to the positive electrode. This movement of the ions to the opposite ends of the electrodes allows electric current to flow through the solution. So, inorganic compounds are generally electrolyte. They are capable of conducting an electrical current in the solution because they have ions in them. Number seven, organic compounds cannot make salts because they are formed by covalent bonds while inorganic compounds can make salts because they mostly form an ionic bond. And lastly, number eight, the range of application of organic compounds is enormous and also includes but is not limited to food, pharmaceuticals such as drugs, antiseptic, disinfectant, cosmetics, and more. Petrochemicals such as petroleum, gas, fuels, plastics, soaps and detergents, solvents, fertilizers, pesticides, explosives, synthetic fibers and rubbers, epoxy resins, flooring and insulating materials. Examples, ethyl alcohol, used as beverage, disinfectant and fuel, octane, used as fuel, and glucose, used to sweeten a wide variety of foods. While inorganic compounds are used as catalysts, pigments, coatings, surfactants, medicine, fertilizer, construction materials, food processing, and more. Examples like titanium dioxide used as pigment for coating, magnesium hydroxide used as antacid, and ammonia used in the production of fertilizer. At this point, let's have a learning check. Let's try to assess if you learned something about the lesson. Get your notebook and be ready to select the correct letter in the following properties of organic and inorganic compounds. Learning check number one. Compounds that do not contain carbon. Exceptions are oxides of carbon, carbonates, carbides, and cyanides. Time starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is letter B, inorganic compound. Learning check number two. Are said to be highly flammable and more volatile. Time starts now. is letter A, organic compound. Learning check number 3. These have low melting and boiling point. Time starts now. now. Time is up. The correct answer is letter A, organic compound. Learning check number four. Mostly form ionic bonds between the atoms of the molecule. They are usually small and simple. Time starts now. Time is up. The correct answer is letter B, inorganic compound. 
Learning check number five. In most of the aqueous solutions, these are poor conductors of heat and electricity. Time starts now. Now, time is up. The correct answer is letter A, organic compound. Congratulations! I am sure you got it all correct. For those who got 4 and above, you may proceed in answering the exercises in your module. For those who got 3 and below, please hit play and watch it again. Good luck and happy learning!